with this message, I'm preparing your heart for what God wants to do in your own life. Um, actually, the, what I've titled this message today is God is building us to build others. This is the subtitle for today. God is building us to build others. God is a builder. You must understand that God is a builder. God is a builder. He builds us to build others. Hallelujah. So our theme text for this whole series is found in the book of Psalm chapter 12, 127. I mean reading from verse 1, just two verses in the TPT. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will cycle it in vain. It really is senseless to work so hard from early morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Hallelujah. So the things of God is about the grace of God, Bazalan. It's about the grace of God. That is why this verse says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. Hallelujah. So about your life, God wants to build your life. You can't build your life. God is the one that has the power to build your life. You were brought here to serve God. But before God can use you in the full magnitude of the potential he's put in you, God wants to build you up. God wants to prepare you. Hallelujah. God wants to teach you the mysteries of the kingdom of God. You know, when you get born again, you enter into a construction site where you are the one who's being built. Hallelujah. And when God finished building you up, he turns you into a builder yourself. That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. God saves us and then he prepares us and then he uses us. Hallelujah. It's these three stages. We begin, we continue, and we become. Hallelujah. The place of continuing is the place of construction. That is where God teaches us. That's why Romans 12 verse 1, the apostle Paul says, I beseech you, my brothers, by the message of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. He says, just present it. Just present it. When you present your body as a living sacrifice, God will take your body and begin to build it up. Hallelujah. That is why the next verse, he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the entire renewing of your mind. He says, when you enter Christianity, you focus on Christ, you allow him to build you up. Hallelujah. You no longer focus on where you're coming from in the world. That's what I always talk about to say, when you get born again, you must make a transition. You must understand you were saved to serve God. Exodus 8 verse 1. God said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He didn't put a full stop. He says, so that they may serve me. Hallelujah. So when they were in the wilderness, it was a place of preparation. It was a place where they had to die to themselves. It was the place where they had to be renewed and transformed into who they are now forsaking what they used to be hallelujah that is why as a christian if you enter salvation and you do not you are not interested in being built by god you continue to build yourself you continue to run around let me tell you you'll never find divine purpose and there is life means nothing until you discover who you are whose you are and why you are here hallelujah you must know why you are here you must know why you are here you must know why you are here don't focus on the things that belongs to you. Focus also primary on who do you belong to. Because you belong to someone and you must know that God has an interest. Many Christians don't know that God has an interest. They think they are saved to go to heaven. No, you are not saved to go to heaven. You are sa saved to serve God. You are saved to be prepared by God so that God can use you. Be interested in what his interest in your life, about your life is. God has an interest. Otherwise, he would not have brought us here. Listen, you are alive today because God has an interest. That's why you're alive. That's why you're alive. I always talk about this, that, you know, people get in an accident and everyone die. You are the only one who come out of that accident. Why are you alive? Why are you alive? The devil has been trying to take your life. 
tried everything when we're still a small baby. For you to be alive is a miracle. Why are you alive? Why are you alive? We need to ask ourselves that. Why are we alive? Remember, we were saved to serve God. Serve God while you are still alive. Hallelujah. Allow God to build you up by his grace. He says avail yourself. That's all. Just avail yourself. That's why the things of God require faith. When you have faith, you can do so much in the kingdom of God. Faith and grace work hand in hand. Faith unleashes the grace of God to work in your life. That's why God wants us to believe. It has to be by faith so that it can be according to grace. So that the promise might become sure to all the seed. Hallelujah. It has to be by faith. Believe God. Be a friend of the word of God. Allow God to prepare you. Hallelujah. So note this from our theme text. God's grace must help the builders. Must help the builders. If you are building something in your life, you need the grace of God. Unless if that thing will never make an impact. It will just, it will just be your thing. But it will never have an impact in the, in the broader spectrum of things in the kingdom of God. If it's going to have an impact and change lives, God must build it, not you. You must avail it to God. Or if it's just about you and your family and your own interests, it's okay. You can continue to build. You don't need grace. Even, even worldly people, they do that. They don't need grace. They build empires. They build legacies. They build so many things. And it just takes one moment for everything to go into flame. Because anything you're building outside of God, it can disappear in just a moment. You can't sustain anything outside of the grace of God. Are you listening to me? Guys, you must make an impact while we are still on this earth. We must be interested in what God is interested in while we are still here. The time is short. The master is coming. The oil must keep flowing for as long as we are here. Hallelujah. I always think that it's better for you to allow yourself to be built up. So God is building you. You may not have started building, but at least be in the process of being built. So you are a Christian. You are not in the process of being built and you are not building anything. You have not started living. It's like a person who has been saved but doesn't understand that I am saved to serve God. Saved, but you continue to serve your own life. You have not experienced true deliverance because true deliverance begins when you get delivered to, from yourself. Even gossipers, complainers. That's why the Apostle Paul says it's a sign that you are still a babe in the things of God. If you are, if you are living to criticize, to complain, to point fingers, and so that you have not started being built up. Tell me about soldiers. Do you think the soldiers have the time for civilian issues? That's why the moment you get incorporated as a soldier, you become prepared, you become trained not to think home. You can't be in the army and you are thinking home. No, you can't. You can't. As a soldier of Jesus Christ, you must allow yourself to be built up. This building thing is very, very, it's very, it's very important, very critical, very critical. If God can build you, God can use you to build anything in the kingdom of God. Anything, anything. That is why, that is why I'm, I'm sure you have noticed, some of you have been wondering, in fact, why don't we do it like we used to do? Because in 2021, when we started with our building project, we were emphasizing fundraising. Do you remember that? We came up with fundraising strategies. We invited people to come and fundraise. We are not doing that now. We are moving forward. Because we have, God has built us up. God has prepared us. That's why even in this church, we don't have a, a slot dedicated for us to come and preach to you about an offering. That's why some of you have been in church, you are wondering, why in other churches where you go to, there is a 10 minutes where they try to grind an offering out of you. We don't do that, yeah? We just put the baskets, you can see them, all of you, right? And we want the Holy Spirit to be the one to touch you to give. If you can't give, we will teach the word, the Holy Spirit. You see, the thing that the Holy Spirit teaches us, and the things that the Holy Spirit makes us do. It's not everything that needs to be taught. The Bible says the anointing that abides in you will teach you all things. You will not need that any man should teach you. The Holy Spirit himself in you will teach you. It doesn't need a lesson in class for the Holy Spirit to tell you what you must do the next moment. The question is, are you positioned? Do you have a heart for God? Because that's all. God says, give me your heart. My son, give me your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. God is interested in your heart. If you have a heart for God, God can work with you. Hallelujah. So note this. Note this. Note this. If God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. God can build anything by a few 
or by many. By a few or by many. God can help the builders by a few. Look at Gideon. He was coming against the army of the Midianites. The Bible says that army could not be counted. They were like sand on the seashore. He came with 10,000 men after the, after the cowards have shrinked and ran away. God says, these people are too many for me. They are too many. They are going to take the glory because God does not want us to take the glory for what it does. That is why God wants to, he loves doing things dramatically to show off himself. So that when all of it is said and done, you will know God has done this thing. Hallelujah. God has done this thing. I don't know how many people um, who, who have pledged to give big amounts in the church, especially in land. Some of them are here. They tried to sell that land before they committed it to God and they couldn't sell it. Amazingly, the moment they commit the land to the Lord, boom, it is sold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sold. Sold. Three of them have already brought the money. Three of them. One is still going to bring that money. They tried to sell that land. It could not sell because God had earmarked it for his word. The moment they say, Pastor, we are, we are pledging that land. Maybe some hoping that it won't sell. Immediately, boom. Sold. Why? Because God wants you to know he can do this thing. Hallelujah. I don't know what you are working on in your life. But the thing is, you are trying to build something, but you are not built up yourself. You are not built up yourself. Listen, we build with our hearts. We don't build with our hands. The building happens inside before it manifests outside. If God's grace doesn't build you inside, it will not manifest in the outside. You will toil and toil and toil. Let me show you the last, the last verse, the last part, the last part of, 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 verse, verse, of verse 2. It says, God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they do what? I love that. God can work in your life while you sleep. You wake up and say, huh? Huh? While you sleep. Because when you sleep, your heart doesn't sleep. No, 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 no. Those who sleep, the enemy come and plant tears. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears. When we sleep, our hearts continue to work. Our hearts continue to seek after God. Our hearts continue to yearn after God. Whether we are asleep, we are, we are awake, our hearts are committed to the Lord. Hallelujah. And if God can build you up, I promise you, he can use you to build anything. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9, TPT. So, the title of the message, by the way, time to build. God is building us to build others. Everything that God builds through you is not for you. No, it's not for you. It's for those that God wants to touch through you. That is why Jesus says, when you have done, after you have done what you're committed to do, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We, are, we merely did what was our duty to do. He says, after you have done so well, you don't look in the mirror and say, wow, I'm special. You remember you are an unprofitable servant. You are clay in the hands of the potter. You give credit where credit belongs to. It's not your grace. You just availed yourself and grace took over. Hallelujah. Listen, don't die before you do big things for God. Don't die before you do big things for God. Don't die. You have done big things for yourself, but you are never doing big things for God. Do big things for God. Do things that are uncommon. Allow God to build you up. And God will take you. Wasi susala. Wasi begala. Wasi susala. It's a process. It's a process. Allow God to build you up. He will start you where you are. That is why the scripture says, faithful in little, faithful also in much. Manja, others are saying, no, Lord, I don't want to be faithful here. I can't tithe when I'm here. I can't give when I'm here. At least lift me up a little bit here. Listen, you will never. God can keep lifting you up. The principle is easy. Right where you are. Can you allow God to work with you? Many people make it a money issue. It's not a money issue. It's a capacity issue. Is your heart open for God? That's the whole thing. Is your heart open? Have you yielded your heart to God? Do you trust God or not? 
It's about that. It's about faith. Abraham, when God said, give me now your son Isaac, God had already traveled with Abraham. He had already demonstrated his faithfulness to Abraham. That's why when God says, give me now your son, it was the last straw. Abraham never hesitated. Why? His capacity was established. And God said, now I know. Let's go to the next level. That's the maximum. There's no level after this one. You are now the father of many nations. God says, by myself, I have no other one to swear by. By myself, I swear that in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Why? You have given me your heart. Hallelujah. The, this building thing is about the heart. I tell you, I tell you, this massive project, that's why God gave us and gave us the, the, the theme for that, for that project. It's called the summit. You are going to the next level. We are going to do it with our hearts. Those that, are going, those that are going to not participate, it's not because they're not capacitated. It's because they do not have the capacity within. This is what it's all about. And listen, I beg of you, do not miss the opportunity to be part of something big. Don't miss an opportunity to be part. Do your best. Do your best to be part of this massive project. This miraculous project. This is a miracle project. Come on Friday. I will say some of the things. This is a miracle project. This is, is cooked from the throne of God. And God told me from day one. That I'm going to build this house. That is why. You know, yo, when we launched this in 2021. And God had to redirect us. Because things were not properly. Things were not properly. There was a lot of, of weeds that needed to be removed. And unplugged out. So that God can build this house. Hallelujah. Oh boy. Girl. God is a miracle worker. Can you believe? Some of you are wondering. Hey, the whole is about 7 million. It's been paid. No fundraising. Hey, Pastor Luane, I send them my, my group, my mama. I send them my group, my baba. But put in a children's church. No. No shouting. Nothing. One day the pastor just comes and stands and says, Paid in full, including the legal cost. That's not even one cent owing. One cent, nothing. Paid in full. <laughs> Sitting there wondering, how did God do it? God can do anything. He's just looking for a vessel that he can use. One, he doesn't need many vessels. He can do it with a few or with many. The question is, do we have the capacity to do it? Do you have the capacity to do it? It's the, I'm not asking if you have the bank account to do it. The capacity. Is your heart ready? Is your heart ready? Are you ready to follow the Lord? When it takes you to twist and turn, are you ready to follow the Lord? Because you can be looking here and God says, I am there. Are you prepared to do what God say here, which is not fashionable, which is not comfortable, which is not logical for God to shut this and open that one there? Are you ready? Can you trust God? It's a trust issue. It's a faithfulness issue. Hallelujah. He says, we can do it. He can do it while we sleep. I love that part. He can do it while we sleep. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. TPT. It says, we are co-workers with God. And you are God's cultivated garden. The house he is building. Wow, this is so beautiful. Do you see what it says? We are what? Co-workers with God. Which part is our part? Avail yourself. That's it. And trust him. That's your part. Is that difficult? Avail yourself and trust him. Grace will finish the work. Avail yourself and trust. That's how we work with God. That's how we work with God. The problem with us, we look at our, at, at our resources and focus on this is mine. You own nothing on this earth. You own nothing. You own nothing. Even the clothes you are wearing, they don't belong to you. They belong to God. Do they belong to you? Do you know how to make clothes? You know, you only know sewing. What is the material that makes that clothes? Where does that material come from? We own nothing. That is why we came with nothing. When we depart, you will take nothing out. Don't deceive yourself and think, oh, the one who owns you owns everything. And he has an interest in you. He wants to use you and develop you as a builder. He says, work with me. It's such a privilege to work with God. Oh, my goodness. It's such a privilege. When you grow in maturity and learn to work with God, it's the most beautiful thing ever. 
the most beautiful thing. Let me tell you the secret of Abraham. Abraham reckoned. The scriptures tell us this. It, when you read the interpretation of it in Hebrews chapter 11. It says Abraham came to a conclusion. That if he offered Isaac. God had the power to raise Isaac from the dead. Abraham was not hoping that God was going to stop him. He did not even have an idea of God stopping him. He was ready to offer up his son Isaac and give him to God. How did he do that? How did he do that? How did Abraham do that? He trusted God. He trusted God. Can we trust God? He just availed himself. Abraham knew how he was when he came out of Ur of Chaldeans. From his father Terah, who was a failure. Terah was a failure. And God called his son Abraham. And God began to build Abraham up. One thing that Abraham, if you read, especially Genesis chapter 12, you will see that Abraham loved the presence of God. Everywhere he went, the Bible says, and there he built an altar and called upon the, Lord, the name of the Lord. And there he built an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. And there he built an altar and called on the name of the Lord. Even after he got blessed in Egypt, when he came out of Egypt, he didn't run around looking for malls. No, he went to look for a place where he has raised up an altar. And the Bible says, and there he called on the name of the Lord. God building capacity within him. That is why when it came to a moment where it mattered the most, where, Arab, where so many people failed, so many children of Israel could not make it to the promised land because they never allowed themselves to be built by God. This message is, 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 is deep, but it's practical. You can't build anything for God unless the Lord builds you first. Are you ready to give God your heart? But your heart is attached to so many things. God knows what is connected to your heart. He knows. If I want to touch your heart, he knows where to touch. Will you let him touch that area that is connected to your heart? You may not even know this is what is connected to my heart. But when God comes, he knows. He's not looking at an outward appearance. He's looking to some of you. He just says, just attend prayer. Give me one hour. One hour. He knows you love your sleep so much. He says, and he knows the hour which is so sacred for you. He says, give me that hour. And only once. Listen, listen, listen. When we pray, we don't pray out of our resources. Our fight is to get out of bed. Grace takes over. Grace takes over. Grace takes over. We should hear Pastor Spoo when he's running prayer. You'll think this, this, this man is not normal. It's not human. Grace has taken over. Consistency. Consistency. You hear Pastor Blessing? Consistency. Consistency. Why? Because grace is consistent. It's us who are unstable and inconsistent. Grace is what? Consistent. Very consistent. Very consistent. Just give yourself. Trust him. Allow him to build you up. So when he says... Come and he tells you, read the book of John. Read a chapter every day. You read two chapters, you go back to your own life. How will God build you up? And you think you can do big things, you can't even read the book of John. How? How? God wants to build us so that he can work with us. We are co-workers with God. Oh, I love being a co-worker with God. It's so nice, Pastor Lord. Oh, my goodness. I can't compare it with anything. I love it with all my heart. Even if it's the only thing I do. If God will tell me tomorrow and say, quit practicing law and come and work for me full time. I don't care what Pastor Mom is going to say. I'm going to work full time. The reason why I'm still enjoying practicing law is because God has not said it. And I love practice because a lot of people who go full time, sometimes it's not God who has told them. It's laziness that says, Go full time. So I was on fundis. Now I found Baba Zalwan by him seven days. When and when? Ah, no, sir, tandaza. Really, that's the reason why we 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 quit. We can't pray and do work. I'm not criticizing those that are in full time, and the Lord has told you. I'm talking about those that are presumptuous. Ah, sing na thirty people. Sing funa kuba kwenza shoko si blanda liakula, and then you leave work. So many pastors struggle, struggle so much financially because they jumped out before time i'm saying this to say to you, if god will tell me tomorrow and say my servant i'm calling you into full-time ministry 
I will not second guess God. I'd never second guess God. I will do it. Loving my practices, I do. Doing so well in my practices, I do. But if God will speak, my practice will not stand on the way. I kid you not. My wife knows. This God will say, Blessed Generation Church, Kenya, Rwanda, leave Laba, Basepitori. We are Kenya. I go to Kenya tomorrow. I kid you not. Pastor Mom is ready. I preach to her every time to say, Me, I'm unpredictable. I go with God. Why? Because I'm dead, man. I live unto God. Jesus is coming back soon. I don't want my next level is in Kenya. I'm stuck at Miracle Retail Park. Never. The question is, can you trust God? Can you trust God? Can you see a mansion in heaven that is waiting for you? After God has built you up and used you as a builder here, there is no building in heaven. In heaven is in joy. Everywhere you look is in joy. But here, we enjoy. Here, yeah. grace is sustaining us. What do the Presbyterian church say in Kangak? Yeah, we are co workers with God. We are God's cultivated garden, cultivated garden. God is the one that is preparing us as a garden. He's the one who plants. And when he plants, he's expecting growth. God, because God never plants anything that dies. No, no. God never plants anything that dies. Hallelujah. The ground is the heart. If the heart is ready, the seed will grow. What kills the seed? It's not because of the quality of the seed. It's the quality of the ground. And that's the heart. That's what kills the seed. That's what kills the seed. That's what frustrates the seed. Hallelujah. So the, the house he is building is us. Say God is building me up. Let's look at Colossians 3, verse 23 to 25. It says, put your heart and soul into every activity you do. Put your what? Put your what? Your heart and soul into every activity you do. As though you are doing it for the Lord himself and not merely for others. For we know that we will receive a reward. An inheritance from the Lord as we serve the Lord Yahweh, the anointed one. The reward that God is talking about here, actually the reward I want you to think about. Don't think the reward of money, the reward of cars, the reward of a big house, a beautiful wife, a beautiful husband, the reward of divine health. The reward of God's presence and his manifestation. His presence and the manifestation of that presence. Hallelujah. That when God is in your life, there is tangible evidence that God is in your life. Tangible evidence that God is in you. That's the reward for saving him. He will reward you by making his presence to become visible. His presence in your life will become visible, unquestionable. It will manifest for all to see. You will know that I carry a distinctive mark in my life. The presence of God. That's the reward. There is nothing that beats the presence of God. There is nothing that beats a tangible manifestation of the reality of God in your life. That's the reward you must seek for. That's the inheritance we're talking about. Not material things. Material things come as a result of that presence. It is that presence. That's why Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be attracted to you. You seek for his presence. Hallelujah. And when you avail yourself to serve, God keep increasing the anointing. The more you grow in availing yourself to serve God, the more that anointing grows. Hallelujah. Because the anointing is for service. Hallelujah. So it says, for we know that we will receive a reward, an inheritance from the Lord, as we serve the Lord Yahweh, the anointed one. 25. Hmm? It says, a disciple will be repaid for what he has learned and followed. For God pays no attention to the titles or prestige of men. Self-importance. God doesn't look at that. God does not look at that. If you are a disciple, it means you are a good follower. You allow your teacher to instruct you. Hallelujah. And the Lord is our teacher. Let him instruct us. Let him lead us. Let him guide us to become who he wants us to be. And God will repay us by his presence. Hallelujah. So... The book of Isaiah chapter 60, 
1 verse 4 it shows us something very important which a lot of people don't understand how powerful verse 4 is so when you read from verse 61 this is where jesus says the spirit of the lord god is upon me this is the verse which he read after he came back from the wilderness remember after i was baptized he went to the wilderness to be tested before he came he returned to galilee in the power of the holy spirit when he returned to galilee and entered the synagogue as his custom was he found where it was written in luke 4 18 the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he sent me to heal the brokenhearted the recovery of sight to the blind you know to set at liberty those that are bruised and to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord so what this part means before i read verse 24 before i go to verse 3 it it, it shows us what the anointing is for you understand and then the anointing on the man it shows what the anointing on the man is that's why jesus says the spirit of the lord is upon me because when god works with you he anoints you hallelujah he, and even in the old testament the holy spirit is not just in the new even in the old testament moses was anointed by god to lead the children of israel out elijah was anointed by god elijah was anointed by god you understand it, that anointing is for saving God. That is why the Bible tells us the great thing that Elijah did. He did it by the anointing of God. It was that anointing that taught him and gave him secrets. You understand? So the more you avail yourself, the more that anointing increases in your life. You see, Jesus says, the, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he began to list what the Spirit of the Lord is upon him for. You understand? And then he switches to say, now the anointing is upon me. But that anointing now goes to them. And then it says, verse 3, it says, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may, they may become trees or oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. You see that, the planting of the Lord? We just read where it says that we are God's cultivated field. Now these people, the anointing upon Christ, now it begins to transform these people and make them to be the planting of the Lord. Not just the planting of the Lord, that they may become oaks of righteousness. They are solid. They are solid. But you see the process. It starts with the anointing upon the man. And when the anointing upon the man is functioning, fulfilling the purpose of the anointing, it affects the person who is the beneficiary of the anointing. And what happens? That anointing begins to train them, begins to prepare them, begins to restore them. Because you must understand something about redemption. Redemption is not just buying you out. Redemption comes with restoration. You understand? And when God restores, he does not just restore what was. No, 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 no. It's better. It's in, it it increases even much more. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? So the anointing on the man affects the recipient. But that recipient, the process of the anointing is to get the recipient to become trees or oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And then we come to verse 4. Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me, right? And then he says to give what? Them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may become trees of righteousness. And then let's look at verse 4. And they, and they, and they, and they, when they've become oaks of righteousness, and they, look at what they do, and they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the dissolution of many cities. Where did it start? It started on the anointing upon the man. What did the anointing do to the recipient? They were prepared, they were trained, they were built up to become co-laborers with God. And when they become co-laborers with God, now it changes. It's no longer them. It's now they. It's now they. When it's them, they are the recipient. But now, they are the distributors of the anointing. Hallelujah. They were built up. But what happened? They are now beginning to build. That's how the anointing works. Isaiah is set a pattern and this is the pattern of Christ. When you come to Christ, you enter salvation by Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. You forget about that. You allow God to begin to prepare you. When he begins to prepare you, he will make you an oak of righteousness. Solid, hallelujah. And he will turn you into a builder. And now, that anointing now, you now become a dispenser of the anointing. 
Hallelujah. You don't just carry the anointing to remove burdens upon you after the burden has been taken away. That anointing that rests upon you. Hallelujah. You become the custodian of that anointing. You become a distribution center of that anointing. You become a dispenser of that anointing. Where you were bound, you begin to deliver people in that area where you were bound. In that place where you were weak, God begin to use you to bring strength to others. Hallelujah. God is building us up, Pastor Luan. God wants to use us in these last days. God wants us to take us to another level. But he wants us to be available for us to be used by him so that we can become oaks. You know when you become an oak of righteousness, it means you are solid. Hallelujah. God does not want to use people he did not build. That is why he never wanted the children of Israel to enter the promised land in their old state. Hallelujah. In the wilderness, it is the place of pruning. It is the place of preparation. It is that place where God turned you into a vessel that he can use. That is why when you begin to walk in your calling, they may talk, they may criticize, they may accuse, they may do all sorts of things. You don't, you don't pay attention. You keep moving forward because you know I am an oak of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. They cannot stop me. They cannot stop the anointing. The anointing keep flowing. The anointing keep flowing. The anointing keep flowing. Listen, when you are not prepared as an oak of righteousness, when they begin to speak, you begin to cave in. When you are praying, you are enjoying your prayer life, you hear someone speaking evil about you. What happened? Bad news come, what happened? You stop. But when you know I'm an oak of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, I'm here to give glory to the Lord. The Bible says not being weak in faith, Abraham did not consider his own body being dead. He did not stagger the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. An oak of righteousness, give glory to God. How we know that you are manifesting God is when you give glory to God. In the midst of challenges, you give glory to the Lord. We are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that the Lord may be glorified. Come and shout and say, I am an oak of righteousness. I am an oak of righteousness. I am the planting of the Lord that the Lord may be glorified. Hallelujah to Jesus. Listen, God wants to take you places you have never even dreamed of. The question is, can you let him work with you? Right where you are, right where you are. You can say it's better for you, pastor, right where you are. In the next service, I'm going to share some, of, some testimonies of what God, where God has taken us. We are, we, we are entering into a place. It's a dream place. Mazolan, to be a church that owns 6.3 hectares of land in the city. Six years, six years, six years, six years. We have not even 10, six years, but we own 6.3 hectares of land. We will be owning our own structure in a few months from now. It can only be a miracle. It can only be God. God is ready to work with you if you are available to be used by him. Listen, and when God begins to use you, focus on what the Lord says. Focus on the Lord, what the Lord says. Ignore the noise because the noise will always be there. The, Gesh, the Geshem, the Tobias, and the Sanballat of this world will always be there. They were there in the days of Nehemiah when he was building the wall. What makes you think they won't be there now? They will criticize you and say all sorts of things and make all sorts of accusations. Pay no attention to that. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep advancing. Keep advancing. Keep advancing. Keep advancing. As you go, the Lord will back you up. His grace will back you up. Come and shout and say glory. Glory to Jesus. He will be your life himself he will build your life himself it doesn't matter the setbacks that you experienced in the past he will build your life himself he will bring restoration to you it doesn't matter how difficult they look Lazarus was dead Lazarus was dead four days God says if you can believe if you can believe you will say the glory come and shout glory You must believe that God will build you up. Hallelujah. You must believe that you are unstoppable. God, does, God is not moved by circumstances and what you are going through. He's just looking for you to believe. Hallelujah. Do I have people of faith this morning? Come and stand on your feet. 
we want to pray right now and just thank God for this word. Father, we just want to thank you for this word this morning that went forth with so much conviction. We thank you, Father God, for building us up. We are your buildings, Lord God. We avail ourselves to be used by you so mightily, Lord God. As you lead and guide us, and when you say, go to Olive and Old Bush to win souls, that's where we go. When we say, go to the summit to build me a sanctuary, that's where we are going. Everything that you tell us to do, we thank you that you have capacitated us, uh, us to do it, even in our own personal lives. As you lead and you guide us, Lord God, we will not listen to the voice of the world. We listen only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for someone if you are here. You are not born again. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Or you are watching this on television or on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are watching this from. I want to pray for you right now to receive Jesus. Just make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you that I'm born again. My name is written in the book of life. Thank you, Lord for filling me with your spirit to overflow in Jesus name amen and amen if you made that prayer you're born again you're my brother or my sister I will see you in heaven hallelujah